introduction. It's a pleasure to be here. My name's Matt Arnold. I'm coming to you from Iowa City. Really looking forward to talking to you about the Iowa idea, a century of creativity, collaboration, and persistence. So thanks to all the conference organizers and volunteers that pulled this together. I know we're still getting used to virtual conferences and I really appreciate all that they've done to get the speakers ready. So if there's things that go wrong here, that's on me, not on them. But thanks to, again, to everybody for being here and for all those that pulled this together. So the themes that we want to explore in this talk are the importance of creativity and collaboration in addressing complexity and building a legacy, really extending on that theme of legacy for this year's Big Design Conference. We'll also look at some themes from modern practitioners creatives and craftspeople, things that I've learned uh, in my podcast uh, as I extend a modern version of the Iowa idea. And really for everybody here, knowing that cool things can happen anywhere and that you have the opportunity to build a legacy. So we're all familiar with a Master of Fine Arts, but imagine a world where the MFA didn't exist. Or we may be familiar with the Writer's Workshop or the Iowa Writer's Workshop, and those ideas of writer's workshops have expanded, but the notion of workshopping something, that might not even be there if it weren't for the Iowa idea. And so we wanna talk about what happened in the kind of the sleepy frontier town that was able to, to create this lasting legacy. We've seen modern extensions of this. Here we have Lena Dunham as Hannah in HBO's Girls receiving her acceptance to the Iowa Writer's Workshop. Since this is our first uh, talk uh, for the conference, and uh, I can't be there with you, but virtually maybe you can be here with me, I want to give you a quick sense of place. We're going to run around a few spots, and let's get the blood flowing. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Big Design. Thanks for coming to my talk. Uh, to start the video, I thought uh, maybe we should take you to Iowa City since I can't be there in Dallas. So if you don't mind, we'll head downtown. We'll see uh, some spaces and places. You know what, if we're going to do something special, I need to change. I'll be back in just a second. Thanks. All right, big design. That's much better. Let's say we take a rapid fire tour of Iowa City. I'll show you some highlights of some of the places and spaces that helped develop the Iowa idea where it started, extensions of it today, things that have left a legacy. If you're ready to go, join me on a quick tour. We'll get the blood flowing for this conference. All right, big design. Now we're at the Day House. This is the current home of the Iowa Writers Workshop. When it started, the workshop was the first of its kind and has spread throughout the world, but it all started at the University of Iowa. All right, let's go to the next stop. All right, big design folks. Now we're standing on the pedestrian bridge over the Iowa River. Lots of creativity on our naming conventions here. University of Iowa, Iowa City, Iowa River. But behind me is the school, the original building for the School of Art and Art History uh, in the 30s. And this is where we started to see creatives, scholars, and students starting to collaborate. All right, big design folks. Now we're in Hubbard Park. This is field by the Iowa Mor Memorial Union. But what you have behind me is the old capital. That was the first territorial capital for Iowa and then was the original state capital. And that's also where the first classes took place at the University of Iowa and where we saw uh, some of the early uh, MFA programs start to come to life. All right, big design. Our next stop takes us to the edge of the pedestrian mall in downtown Iowa City. And this was erected as we redid the ped mall down here. You can see there's a poem from Marvin Bell. This was written in 2008 as a commemoration of Iowa City becoming a UNESCO city of literature, the first so in the United States. All right, let's go off to our next stop. We're just outside of Kinnick Stadium, one of the best stadiums in all of college football. And this has really nothing to do with the MFA program, the legacy of the Iowa idea, but wanted to point out that is the Children's Hospital overlooking the stadium. And you might be familiar with just one of the great traditions here. After that was built, uh, an organic tradition arose where the fans, after the first quarter, the team, both teams, turn to the stadium and wave. 
and they wave to all the children and the families watching the game on game days on Saturday. It's a really cool tradition, and I hope you can see it someday. Again, nothing to do with an MFA program, just a little about Iowa City. All right, off to our next stop, Bing Design. Here we are at Longfellow Elementary School. This is where uh, my daughter went to school and my son will be starting sixth grade, whatever that looks like, in the fall. But even our schools here in Iowa City pay a nod to our literary connection. So Longfellow School, we have Twain School nearby as well. All right, off to our next stop. Here we are at the another edge of the pedestrian mall in Iowa City. And what you can see here are some street markers, this one at Washington and Dubuque. And this is part of our legacy as a city of literature. You can see markers like this, reminding people of the history and also inspiring people to move forward. All right, welcome back. Uh, everybody grab your seats. <laughs> uh, so hopefully all is going well, and I hope you appreciate being able to see elements of the University of Iowa and Iowa City. But let's dig into the original Iowa idea. So we'll take a timeline and a this is just some elements to help create a sense of context. In 1839, Iowa City becomes uh, the territorial capital for Iowa. And then shortly thereafter, it will become the first state capital uh, in the University of Iowa. 1847, the University of Iowa is organized and it's the first major university to allow men and women as students on an equal basis. Fast forward to the 1920s, the notion of the Iowa idea starts to emerge. That's President Walter Jessup, University President Jessup, and he and some colleagues started talking about how they might be able to bring practicing artists to campus to collaborate with scholars and students to really help everybody better understand theater, arts, literature, and that was extended then into the 30s. It started to come to life. And uh, what you have there is that's a picture of the first uh, art building at the University of Iowa along the Iowa River. And it was the art department, the School of Art History that really helped make this happen. Uh, but there were extensions soon into theater and literature and the Iowa idea really starts to take off in, the, in 1936, that's Wilbur Schramm he created a course called the workshop and actually built the first Iowa Writers Workshop. Wilbur Schramm is a really interesting character for folks, uh, did a lot of important work in communication. If you, if you have a communication degree, you can thank uh, Schramm for that. Uh, he named the discipline uh, and then built programs at Iowa, University of Illinois, uh, and then ultimately at Stanford. In uh, the early 1940s, Schramm is going to leave the University of Iowa and the workshop to go work with the federal government, uh, analyzing and studying propaganda as a mass communication expert. That's where he felt he could deploy his skills. So he leaves the University of Iowa and the workshop. Uh, 1940, we have the MFA. So the first MFA is, is, is awarded. And the importance there is that creative work could be submitted for degree requirements. Again, further in the 40s, when Schramm leaves, that's Paul Engel. Paul Engel takes over. He was a former student of Schramm's and important in uh, getting the workshop off the ground and then really accelerating it up and through the to the 1970s. In, in the 70s, uh, Engel and his wife also create the Iowa, uh, or sorry, the International Writing Program as an extension of the workshop. And uh, both of them were uh, uh, nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Engel's basic belief at this point is that if people are busy writing and creating art, maybe they'll be less busy for war. And so he was trying to extend uh, at a broader mission uh, what, what writers, arts, and, and creatives can do for the world. And then modern day 2009, University of Iowa and Iowa City were happy to uh, become a UNESCO City of Literature. Uh, the first city of literature in the U.S. Uh, I believe Dublin was first in the world, uh, but Iowa City getting recognition as a uh, city of literature in 2009. Speaking of Dublin, that is Oscar Wilde, uh, and he was an early visitor uh, to Iowa City uh, as, as a creative, and kind of in the spirit of Oscar Wilde, I feel like kind of he, he left something in Iowa's DNA, but uh, we sometimes if you've been here, you might realize that Iowa City is uh, 
a laid back kind of party town at times. And so uh, in, in Oscar Wilde terms, it might may be seen as a drinking city with a literature problem or on Big Ten football uh, Saturdays is, is that it's a drinking city with a football problem. Many might be familiar with this painting. This is American Gothic and it's from Grant Wood. Uh, Grant Wood shortly after painting this came to the University of Iowa to teach. So part of the Iowa idea was extended uh, in painting. And in modern day Iowa City, this is just a few blocks from my house, uh, we have the Grant Wood Art Colony. That top image, that was Grant Wood's house while he was here, the back side of the alley, uh, then on the opposite side of, or the other side of the block, there are a few homes that are set up there. Those are called the Grant Wood Art Colony and artists live there. Uh, there are folks that, basically receive scholarship to live there. And this is another way that the University of Iowa helps try to cultivate, promote, and support artists. Uh, but the Grant, the Grant Wood uh, co art colony is a collaboration with the University of Iowa. And all these ideas sound great. And we just, it makes sense to have an MFA. It makes sense to have the writer's workshop, but it wasn't easy. There were, were struggles along the way, even from the English department uh, on how, and what could be taught. And this, this is a letter from John Frederick to the administration, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but this was, this was him basically saying, everybody knows that uh, we have a reputation now for being creative. And there was a lot of hard work that went into this achievement. However, the English department continues uh, a more scientific, philological approach or an event investigation. Right? And so that's dominating the graduate work almost to the exclusion of the creative effort. And so Frederick goes on to say, within a few years, by the continuation of this process, our leadership and creative effort in the region will be lost. University President Jessup agreed with Frederick and helped create uh, you know, and extend the idea that imaginative creative work could be applied to more uh, degrees and Iowa School of Letters, as you see in the, the headline, then is now the College of Liberal Arts and Science. But we, we see that imaginative creative work can, can continue to be applied towards uh, uh, university degrees. And also when it comes to legacy and creating, know that we can start small. The workshop didn't start as this, this big institution. The workshop actually started as a course. Uh, and that that's from its, its original um, uh, university catalog and you can see in there that we have uh, Shram as a professor, a few other professors, but then you also have Mr. Engel who will end up uh, taking over the workshop. But that th these themes of legacy, they can start small, a little bit more context of some of the people that came through the programs related to the Iowa idea. Uh, famous playwright Tennessee Williams did his undergraduate here in theater. Uh, theater was really expanding that idea, the Iowa idea as well. Uh, the rest of the people on, on this screen are affiliated with the Writers' Workshop. Flannery O'Connor was a student. Uh, Rita Dove, U.S. Poet Laureate and Pulitzer Prize winner, she was a student here. Kurt Vonnegut wasn't a student, uh, but it, the, he credits this as being a very important time for him. And he actually uh, finished uh, Slaughterhouse-Five while he was an instructor at the, uh, the workshop. Other students, Jane Smiley, John Irving, who was actually a student of Vonnegut's, and they became friends uh, here. Raymond Carver, T.C. Boyle, and list goes on. Uh, modern day extension, here we have Alex Deason. Uh, when I interviewed him for the podcast, asked him why he went, and he simply said, when the door opens, you walk through. That's how highly he thought of the workshop. And you may be familiar with Alex's work in the Damwells. Uh, more, uh, his modern band is called uh, Broken Baby and they're out of LA. And he also writes songs for, uh, formerly known as Dick, Dixie Chicks, now the Chicks. Uh, he's written songs for Justin. Impact and Legacy, there are 40 Pulitzers associated with the Writer's Workshop. That's from the practitioners and alumni. 17 specifically from alumni. So you can see, what this small idea grew and the legacy that it, it leaves and extends into today's work. So just quickly a little bit about the Iowa Idea podcast. I launched this in May. It had been um, in the works for, for a while, but uh, uh, COVID kind of accelerated getting, uh, getting it produced. 
So if you if you want to visit, there's the the URL, uh, the IOIdea.com. And in that, I'm looking at stories of craft, creativity, collaboration, and persistence. And uh, the objectives or goals, I really want to tell cool stories, more importantly, highlighting the beauty in the stories of people that make the world a more interesting place. And so the, the themes are creativity, craft, collaboration, persistence or grit, or one of my favorite uh, Finnish words is sisu, which is about this ongoing kind of stoic grit, uh, but doesn't have a direct English translation. And again, the idea that cool things can happen here, they can happen where you're at. And so that's, again, one of the things I'd really love to, to encourage everybody here, especially younger students, to think about how might you be able to make a lasting contribution and know that it can happen anywhere. The reason I went with podcasts to tell the Iowa Idea stories in modern form is really the kind of, as a medium, podcasting allows long form conversation. I just don't believe that blog posts or especially uh, tweets or Facebook posts can really uh, tease out the nuance of how these uh, craftspeople are approaching their work. So some of the guests, to give you a flavor of who we've had, uh, there's the first 30 guests there as of recording uh, this session. I have 31 produced episodes. Some of them are musicians. Some of them have uh, the title designer or have, have been designers, and some you might be familiar with uh, in, in different conference talks or different publications. Uh, Mike Montero, Nick Scappatici from TellArt, Aaron Walter from InDesign, and just recently released a book with uh, Book Apart on Designing for Emotion, actually the second edition of the book. Other, lots of authors, people that have written academically, people that have uh, uh, written fiction, written nonfiction, and so a bunch of authors. And other titles uh, include comedian, fashion activist, diversity and inclusion pioneer, Ann Harris Carter. Uh, it was a fascinating interview, and she, she created two uh, DNI programs at major retailers uh, in the 90s, uh, 80s and 90s. A bonsai teacher uh, that was with Jonas Dupuy, uh, and that was a fun interview. So many uh, parallels between bonsai and design. That might be an interesting one if you're interested in checking that out. Entrepreneurs, civic leaders, innovators, uh, and a microbiologist. And we spent a lot of time talking about how uh, bacterial colonies have hierarchies and how they communicate with each other and how they're organized. So uh, some really interesting things there and a few behavioral science researchers. But episode 31 was with David Dylan Thomas. And so uh, just a plug for uh, uh, a talk that's going to be later today, uh, but had a wonderful time talking to uh, Dave about cognitive bias, about his new book. And so I highly encourage everybody to uh, jump in on his talk, which will be first presented uh, a little bit later today. So the themes, uh, the preliminary findings for me, collaboration, it's always important, even though sometimes we think of an individual artist, the amount of collaborators to, to bring big, important uh, work to bear, it, it can't be overlooked. Persistence is that it is a struggle, that we do have to persist, that we have to show that kind of grit or sisu if we're going to leave a legacy. Also that uh, these practitioners, modern craftspeople, they're wearing multiple hats. And one of the big things I see there is their, their ability to draw from other systems. Uh, a lot of curiosity from other systems, especially music. I see that happening a lot. And then a commitment to continuous improvement and mastery. Uh, they continue to explore and see how they might do better or extend ideas or learn new ideas. And so those are just a few things that I might share with you as we're looking at the theme of, of leaving a legacy. And... Again, if this can happen in Iowa City, a sleepy frontier town in the 1800s, and then in the 1920s, in the middle of nowhere, produces the Iowa Writers Workshop and becomes a city of literature, I think anywhere where you are, you can work to build and help cultivate a design legacy. So with that, just want to thank everybody. And I know we'll move on to the uh, live Q&A portion of the talk. Thanks again. It's such an honor to be here with the big design community. Take care, everybody.